Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy feast day to everyone. Welcome to this Eucharistic celebration of the Solemnity of All Saints. As we commemorate all, all the saints of the Church on this holy day, let us ask ourselves what this day means to each one of us. According to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, All Saints' Day is the feast of all of us, a holy occasion to increase our faith and hope. This is the day when we celebrate humility as the main virtue of all the saints. Saints are not perfect models, but are people whose lives God has crossed. Saints are the simple, the humble who make room for God, who always work for peace and remain in joy, not in hate. And even when suffering, respond to evil with good. The Feast of All Saints, then, is not celebrated only in honour of those who have reached the goal and attained heaven. It is also for the many simple and hidden people whom we may know and who, through everyday holiness, help God to carry the world forward. Let us, as we come into God's presence, take some time to reflect on how the holiness of God has touched our, heart, our lives. We search ourselves with humility and reach out to God in faith and hope to be counted among his saints. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall walk the fire in safety. But you do not know the way You shall speak your words to foreign men And they will understand You shall see the face of God Follow me 
Please stand and pray the entrance and phone together. Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honor of all the saints at whose festival the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. Welcome, dear friends. Today we celebrate the solemnity of All Saints' Day, a beautiful celebration that tells each one of us we do not only look up to all the saints that we know, we also have so many unsung heroes. We also have living people who are saintly, with saintly actions being mirrored in their lives. So these are many things that we could celebrate today. Maybe among us, there are people who are living their faith, struggling and yet keeping their faith and doing wonderful work. You are potential saints. The little things that you do, the little wonderful virtues that you carry with your life, in your life. These are possible things can happen, and these are things that we see in saints. So for the times we fail to live our hearts and lives according to what God has called us to, we turn to him and seek forgiveness and mercy. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and, and on, on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you. you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, 
only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, to the prayers of so many intercessors an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. After this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing round the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, the responsible psalm is, These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. 
The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the rivers he made it firm. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. These are the people who seek your face, O God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared but we know that when he appears we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure the word of the Lord thanks be to God Please stand and pray the gospel acclamation together. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure of heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Happy are you when people abuse you, persecute you, and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, I think it's a great celebration for the church today as we commemorate the solemnity of All Saints Day. And for this church, you are sitting just beside a saint. You are sitting beside a saint who have gone before us. And you will be able to see that this sainthood is nothing to do with people who have gone just left us and sharing the great glory in, in heaven, but it is also to do with the unsung heroes who are not being canonized, but it is also to do with people like us, people like you, who are struggling and living their faith, and these are things that you could find making it possible for us to be saints. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, today as the Universal Church celebrates All Saints Day, on this solemnity, we are reminded of the heart of Jesus' message this morning, the Sermon of the Mount, an illustration of the Beatitudes of life. These Beatitudes that we have heard from the Gospel this morning, dear friends, sum up beautifully our calling and our vocation as people of faith, as Christians, as disciples of God. The word Beatitudes literally would mean happiness and blessedness. Only God, dear friends, can give such happiness and only God can give such blessedness in our lives. We may search for it everywhere. We may go looking for it, finding where can we find happiness unless you find it in God, you will never be able to find true happiness and true blessedness. In fact, God is so generous in many possibilities and circumstances. You'll find God is so generous and he gives everything to lead us into that great happiness in life in and through him. The Sermon of the Mount, which we have heard, dear friends, tells us that God, in fact, has placed this desire in every human heart. He has placed this desire in your heart, that this desire for happiness, this desire to be blessed. And this is something wonderful that we should recognize as we celebrate this beautiful solemnity of All Saints Day that God makes our heart long to be blessed, that God makes our heart to be people who look for happiness, not what the world can offer, but what God can offer. Jesus' message confronts us, dear friends, if you read and listen to today's gospel, you'll find the message of Jesus confronts and challenges each one of us with these decisive choices concerning with life that we are pursuing here and now. Because nothing can satisfy, it is true, nothing can satisfy our heart's longing and only God can satisfy the deepest need of the human heart. In the book of Psalms, 107 verse 9, illustrate this notion that only God can satisfy the heart that longs for him and the hungry soul can only be filled by his hands, by his action, by his love. St. Teresa of Avila, dear friends, in a way of expressing this beautiful thought of God can satisfy the soul, in a little bookmark that she made by herself, and this was found later in a prayer book, and you find she says something in that little bookmark, and it says that, let nothing disturbs you. 
Let nothing frighten you. All things will pass, but God will never change, says St. Teresa. Whoever has God, whoever has God, lacks nothing. God alone suffices, and this is what happiness is all about. I think this is beautiful. This is beautiful reminding us that as we look for many other things that could make our hearts happy, but true happiness is only found in God. And when we find God, we lack nothing. Everything seems to be complete. Everything seems to be there in the hearts of each one of us. And this is what the saints look for, dear friends, brothers and sisters, all those who have gone before us, all those who we find living in the glory of the Lord. We find these are people who made God and made their hearts complete with the love of Christ. When we look at the Beatitudes, the Gospel reading today, dear friends, Jesus seems to offer a sign of contradiction to the world's understanding of happiness and joy. People may ask, and you may ask yourself, how can one possibly find happiness in poverty? How can one find happiness in hunger? How can one find happiness when one moans and one is persecuted? How can we find happiness? And this would be the question that we would ask today as we listen to the gospel reading. But dear friends, it is possible because poverty in spirit finds ample room and joy in possessing God as the greatest treasure possible. Hunger in spirit seeks nourishment and strength in God's word and God's word alone. And you find sorrow and mourning over wasted life and sin can lead us into joyful freedom from the burden of guilt and spiritual oppression and persecution. So there is great advancement in our spiritual life and it is never a contradiction what the world is offering because what God offers enhances what the world can give us. When you have God, everything else will be put in place. The happiness that you have in God makes even the little things that you don't get in life, you still remain happy and blessed, dear friends, brothers and sisters. So today, dear friends, as we come to listen to and to these readings of the day, as we celebrate this beautiful feast, we are called to be witnesses in and through Christ. And this is mainly, is just because God has created rooms possibilities and more so opportunities for us to live our lives saintly. The saints did God's will wholeheartedly. The saints love God wholeheartedly. They also love their fellow creatures as themselves. These saints, whoever it could be, whoever we know who have gone before us, put their trust in God, did His will and collected treasures for the kingdom of God. They were not disappointed in many situations. They faced troubles, yes. They faced turmoils. Rather, they prove that it is possible in all this situation and yet keep going with Christ. And that is what we are called to. Many of us sometimes, dear friends, when difficulties come knocking at our doors, when we are faced with all kinds of fears, we find ourselves moving away from God who is love. And this is what that makes us lose the blessedness and the happiness of life. I have people who are going through difficult moments, dear friends. I have people who have seen what is life and life is so miserable. And they tell me this, dear friends, that I keep going is just because I have faith in God. I have this little love for God and I know God will never leave me in this situation. You know, dear friends, sometimes we depend too much on friends, we depend too much on things and you find all this will help us, it will never. I believe that in every juncture, 
in life. If you have kept the God and a focus, you find even in the midst of all this, you are still blessed. You are still feel you are made for the Lord. So dear friends, today as we come to celebrate All Saints Day, let us remember all the saints, your patron saint, your favorite saint, your special saint, those people who live in your life, those people who you know have done saintly things. You know, sometimes when we talk about All Saints Day, we think of all those beautiful saints who are being canonized. Sometimes we forget that there are little and beautiful saints living among us. It could be your father, it could be your parents, it could be even your grandmother, it could be even someone who is just sitting and sharing hope towards us. These are little saints that helps us grow and be blessed with happiness. So dear friends, I just like to conclude with this little story, a true story about Cardinal Sauter, which I read. It is said that Cardinal Sote once went for a meeting and he was the chairman of the so-called Religious Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism and Taoism. And what was interesting is all came and they went into the room but before entering the room they are called to leave their footwear their shoes and whatever they wore behind and enter into that room. And after the meeting, it was already dark, then came all of them taking their shoes and they went back. The last two who came out was in fact the, that so-called Archbishop Soter then and the Buddhist chief monk was the last two who came out from that room. After Cardinal Sote found his shoes, you find the Buddhist monk was still looking for his sandals in the dark. Then came Sote, dangling the chief's, the chief monk's sandals and placing them at the abbot's feet. The monk was shocked. The monk was embarrassed that the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur had actually touched the sandals with his bare hands. And you find the chief monk said, what are you doing, Archbishop? Why do you touch my sandals? And to this, the Archbishop responded, I only, I'm only the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, but you are the chief monk of both Malaysia and Singapore. And both of them, in fact, laughed. Both of them laughed and both of them, in fact, gave a hug and each of them went back home. I share these little stories just because you don't need to do extraordinary things. You don't need to do big things because sometimes the ordinary things, the little things that you do, make it a saintly act, a beautiful act. Like, just like Cardinal Soter, he did not thought about asking someone, hey, go and search and look for the monk's sandal. But he went looking and bringing that sandal, dangling it and bringing and putting it on the feet of the monk. A wonderful, saintly act. Sometimes this act, the saintly act, could be in the words that we utter. It could be the little gesture that we made. It could be the little hope that we gave. It could be the love that we shared. And dear friends, you could be potential saints. You could be already living saintly life because sometimes our focus on saints is on those people up there glorifying and sitting with the Lord, sharing in the holy banquet. But more than that, it is all like us, people like you who have made your faith strong living your faith and this is what we celebrate today it's a great celebration of each one of us it's a celebration that you should celebrate deep in your life so dear friends happy feast day 
God bless you and remember you are not alone in this journey because the saints are not just models, they are not just heroes, they are intercessors for each one of us as we live our life of faith. Amen. Let us all stand, dear friends, and profess our faith. I believe in one God. The only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, on this beautiful solemnity of All Saints Day, I ask you to pray for three intentions. The first intention, we will pray for our family the beautiful gift that God has given. The family members of each one of us are people who are gifted. So let's recognize them, let's offer them to the Lord, that they may be graced, they may be blessed. Pray for your family now. Secondly, dear friends, I ask you to pray for someone. There are many people who are struggling during this pandemic. There are many people who have lost jobs. People are struggling in life. People are falling apart. Let's pray and remember one person, a person who you know you should pray for. Offer that person to the Lord now. And lastly, dear friends, I ask you to pray for yourself. You know, the call of All Saints Day celebration is to call towards holiness. So let's pray for ourselves that we may truly be lovable people in God's eyes. We may be people who know where to put God, not outside, but at the center of heart. Pray for yourself for, to be graced, to be healed, to have that love of God. Pray for yourself now. And we bring all these petitions, all the things that are deep in our hearts, 
the people who we know who are struggling, the kind of difficulties and struggles and fears that we are going through, the anxieties they are experiencing, we bring them before Mary, our mother, and ask her to pray for all of us. Together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, dear friends, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this offering we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church to whom you give us our frailty, both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice we praise and we acclaim. 
Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through whom and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, Yesterday, Father Simon, as he celebrated the Mass, he said something beautiful. He says, to be a saint is nothing to do with us. And do not look and do extraordinary things, because God does extraordinary things in and through you. I thought that was a wonderful way of telling, don't do extraordinary, because the little simple ways that you do could be extraordinary for some for people around us. So we pray and ask God to bless us as we say this beautiful prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let me 
roses from the mouth of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Happy are those who thirst for His right. There shall be satisfied. Happy the people, for there shall see God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Happy are you when people persecute you all on my account. Rejoice for your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia. Salvation belongs to our God Who sits upon the throne And unto the land Praise and glory, wisdom and thanks Honor and power and strength Be to our God forever and ever Be to our God forever and ever Be to our God forever And we the redeemed shall be strong in purpose and unity, declaring out loud praise and glory, wisdom and thanks. To the Holy One, we thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks 
because it's given Jesus Christ is sad and now let me see I am strong let the poor see I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let me see I am strong. Let the poor see I Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks. Let us pray the communion antiphon together. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy, and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace, so that coming to perfect holiness in fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends, brothers and sisters. So, dear friends, there is just one or two or three announcements that I would like to make on this weekend. First and foremost, of course, we are celebrating All Saints Day to today, and tomorrow we will celebrate All Souls Day. And as you know, we have uh, made the Kalawai Road Cemetery available for visitation from morning right up to 5 p.m., so please, if you can, do stagger yourself and go. Do not go at one time, everyone, because the permit or the approval is only for 150 persons per time. So as you go to pray for your loved ones, for the soul of your loved ones, and to say a prayer at the grave of your loved ones, please do not take a lot of time because the others will also be uh, coming to pray. So I ask you to keep 30 minutes just to be there to pray. And those of you who just cannot go for one reason or another, i like to share with you that do not worry too much. It's just because I've asked the deacon's information, Deacon Peter and Richard, to in fact to go and place a candle on all the graves which are not being visited. I've told them to say a little prayer for the, those who have gone. So they are still being prayed, all these uh, non-visited graves. They are still being connected because there are still people who will be there to place a candle and also to pray for them. And those of you who are going there, if you see you're going to Western Road or to Klawai Road Cemetery, uh, do not forget just to pray also for the, for the graves of those persons who have died that are placed just beside your loved ones. You know, sometimes when we go and pray, we only pray for the grave of our loved ones. Sometimes these people who just cannot come, it's just because of the lockdown. People from KL, Kuala Lumpur, Slango, and all these people just cannot come back today. So if you go and say a little prayer, just say a little prayer for the neighboring grave the person who have gone i think these are little ways that we could do sanely act and these are important of course tomorrow at 8 p.m we have the all saints day mass 
I know many of you will not be able to come because we are only catering for 270 to 300 people a time in the church, but you can watch live stream the whole Mass tomorrow at 8 p.m. I think these are little moments that we take things seriously. You know, sometimes we will say, ah, no need to attend Mass, I am free because... Uh, but it is good to be connected. So tomorrow, 8 p.m., there's Mass, uh, will be live stream, and all those who are you, who are, who are of you, who are here for Mass, it's a blessing because not everyone can come for Mass. So dear friends, brothers and sisters, that is just one of the t or two announcements that I'd like to make. And also let's pray that each one of us will take care of ourselves. You know, the, we, let us not take it for granted that the pandemic is just in the prisons in this state because the pandemic have moved out. It is everywhere. So we need to be extra careful. Take care of yourself. Take care of as you go out, wear the mask, check your temperature. If you're not well, stay at home. And these are things that we could do to help contain the pandemic. So dear friends, once again, thank you very much. God bless you as you leave. We ask you to be generous to share your contribution to the church so that it would help us maintain and sustain the church. As I said, the money is also to help the so many families that are poor. In fact, we are trying to cater for their needs, their everyday needs. So something that you give, your contribution will help us to sustain and maintain and help the poor. As usual, dear friends, God truly loves you so much. In all the problems that we go through, just remember this, God loves you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their unstanding and outstanding prayers bless you with unending blessing. Amen. Amen. Freed through the intercession from present life and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serve God and neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys and happiness of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Dear friends, the Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
みたいな。